I want to show you a little bit about uh, with our Protosteel platform. Now, to do that, I'm actually going to uh, open up a different model. Okay, so I, I've, and and I just want to sort of focus on the steel aspects of Protosteel. So this is the last thing I'm going to show. Uh, this will be about about five five to ten minutes, and then I'm going to um, summarise what we've covered today. So in in Protostructure, once you've done uh, the steel design, you can then Send this out to Protosteel. So I'm going to launch Protosteel, um, and it will just take all the physical information from Protostructure into Protosteel. What it also does is communicates all the underlying analysis results. So all the end reactions, uh, all the analysis forces are also communicated in to Protosteel. And in the Protosteel environment, you might just see that along the top here, we have a whole lot of different what we call macros that are for doing connection design. And these macros are intelligent, and the way they work is that you can just select a macro and you can apply it to the model. So if I wanted to say, for example, connect uh, the pearl or girt there to the column, I can just choose a macro and that connection's in design. Now there's a wide range of different types of macros here, so you've got things like uh, end connections, spin plate connections, you have uh, moment resisting connections, welded joints, uh, gusset gusset joints both bolted and welded uh, there's even tubular connections in here there's connections even to to concrete so there's a range of different connections that you can take advantage of and there's also ways in which you can finish off the steel work so if you have to put in things like uh, steer treads and railing and checker plate those types of things can be created from here as well what I'm going to do now is just just move in, in and, and we'll, we'll design a few more uh, connections in here. I may come to the apex here and maybe we want to assign a connection there. So again, I can just connect the macro and create those. Um, I'm just going to turn the cut, cuts off and I'll just also hold uh, hide the welds here so that they uh, things are just a little bit clearer for you. Um, um, I'm also going to come um, to this this connection here, um, and let, let's come in and put in a haunch connection. So I can choose the column and, and then the beam, and then we will attempt to design this. Now, as I mentioned, these are macros, so I can come in and uh, work with these. So the macros are dynamic, and you can come in and adapt these to suit. So for this particular connection, I may wish to enter an extra stiffener plate. Okay, I can also uh, play with uh, things like uh, Bolt arrangements. So if I decided that I want to have a certain distance and a certain number of bolts and uh, spacings, these can be uh, manipulated in here as well. So if you just look at this uh, connection, you can see I've applied that and I've adjusted uh, my bolt arrangements here to suit. Now I'm going to uh, come and uh, uh, connect the, the the beam here to the column, and for this I might also want to use a um, stiffen end plate connection. I can choose the column and the beam. But I also want to take advantage of these stiffener plates here to connect this. So I can just choose those as well. And Protosteel will go away and make use of those and come up with a, a constructible joint. So you can see there that I've just quickly created that and it's built out the connection to allow that to, to happen. And, it, and it's looking at things like, okay, I, I need to get my hand in behind that to tighten that bolt. So we've looked at constructability and creating this. What we're also doing underneath this is that we are, we are checking um, the the connection, and if I if I just uh, come and um, select the the macro there, okay, I'm just going to come in and, and and look at the report for this. So we're going to use the American code. Uh, you can choose the British code or the European standards, and you can click on this, and then it will go away and create the underlying report for this. So here you can see that we've documented the connection design, all the different checks are being performed, and you can see that they're being created there step by step. Now, um, so whether it's a um, whether it's a a, um, a an end plate or maybe a haunch here, you get again you can just come and choose the report and you can come and look at this in more detail. So if I choose again that report there, we can come and interrogate this uh, and see uh, see whether that's been uh, satisfactorily designed or not. Okay, so again, you can see all the different checks that's been performed and, um, and, and to the code of practice. Okay. 
Now, um, if I had to go away and um, uh, choose every connection, I could be here for some time. Uh, so what we've introduced is a platform called IntelliConnect. And if I select this model, I can use IntelliConnect to help me automate the design of a lot of our standard connections. So here I'm going to come in and design the Perlin connections. We can choose our preference for how we would like the Perlins uh, uh, connected. I might use an angle plate and we, an angle cleat and we want it reversed. And then I can just run this and it's now going away and forming those connections for the Perlins and the roof. So if I come in here, you can see that they have been defined in the model and they've been set up in the, and, and those connections have been made. Now let's go down and look at another part of the model. I'm going to go down and look at the uh, first story there and you can pull out parts of the model and just look at those independently. So let's just um, uh, look at that in more detail. I, I can flick between different views, wireframe views as well as solid models. At this point in time I'm just going to come and select this floor. Let's choose the floor and again I'm going to come to uh, uh, product, uh, come to IntelliConnect and I'm going to ask it in here to create my floor beam connections. So here I'm going to choose the preferences that I have for the floor beams. I'm going to choose my bracing preferences and we can also do things like move stiffener plates to allow for easier access to the joint. And if I just run this and you'll just see it's, it's now examining those connections and it's intelligently adjusting things to suit. So you can see it's just running through and automating the connection design there, uh, as well as adjusting things to suit con constructability. So if you just give it a few seconds, it's just going to go through and complete this, okay? And you'll see that it's then moved in uh, and designed all the connections in the floor there. Now you can uh, set up your preferences for the way in which connections are made. So if you have a preference for the number of bolts that you wish to use, and so on that can be also established within the software but here you can see that we've gone through and, and made all those connections within that floor so let's do a few more things that might be also challenging and uh, at this point what i'd like to do is um is move in and look at look at the connections that we might be making between uh the, the beams and columns and bracing systems so to do that i'm going to run the uh, the column beam connections and again, we can choose our preferences. So you can choose the order of preferences. If you don't want to choose it, you can unselect. But you can just choose an order of preferences. It will check this order and, and see whether or not uh, these are satisfying the code or not. So we can, again, we can run through, set up our preferences. Uh, if we want to make other adjustments, we can. And then we can ask the software to, to, to run this. So if I'm just running this, you can see it's now intelligently examining those joints and it's working out the most efficient way to connect these okay it's also looking at constructability so we are trying to come up with uh, um, uh, effective ways to make these connections and produce uh, the design so that's done um, and you can see if i looked at this joint which is quite a complicated joint where i've got uh, bracing coming in i've got beams coming into the column at different points um, you can see that we have made that, that connection there now I could come around and, and design other things within the model. I can just continue to use IntelliConnect to look at different design and we can um, we can design those accordingly. So if I wanted to introduce splice connections, they can also be done here. Okay, so we're, we're done, okay, and uh, we can look at that. So you can look at partial model or you can look at this in relation to the entire model. Now at this point, I might just want to come in and look at the drawings um, and um, to, and, and start to look at the way in which we might uh, uh, provide some connection details. And I'm going to pick on a joint and we're going to detail this out. So if I select a, a, a joint, uh, we can just come in and create what we call a, a box or a detailed item manager. We could call this a column beam connection uh, one. We can add this and I can select um, objects that I might want to appear within uh, this, this connection. So I'm going to choose the elements around this. And if I right click, you can see that we've created a box around that joint. Now these are actually different views, and if you just, if I just turn these off, you can see it, you can choose uh, the different views of the connection that you might want to, to detail out. I can also add 3D perspectives of this, okay, and um, I can just create little boxes around the model to allow me to detail out different joints that I'd like to look at. So to create the drawings from this, 
we just go to the drawing manager and the plan views here have been pre-populated. So if I just click on to this point, uh, that's story one, you will see that we've actually created uh, the plan view of that within the title block. And you can see uh, a plan view of that particular uh, floor. Now, um, I can uh, start to annotate this. So I can select those elements. And if I wanted to annotate the members at this point, I can. So you can see the section sizes have now been uh, assigned to this drawing. We can also start to dimension things out. So if I wanted to dimension, uh, do some basic dimensioning here of that floor plan, uh, then we can do this and we can work with the start to work with the steel detailing here. And what you'll also notice here is that there's a a, um, a leader around the connection detail here. And if I just come out and I click on the uh, on the this uh, box again, you'll see that it's then going to start to to draw this out. So you can see the connection details have been uh, created there. I'm just going to zoom in. I'm just going to turn off my uh, world annotation. Uh, and we can zoom in here and you can see uh, that those drawings, those views or snapshots of that detail have been created here. And you can also work with these to, to do uh, further annotation. So if I'd like to annotate uh, the members in there, or maybe I also want to annotate uh, the bolts, I could annotate the welds and so on. I can then move in there and do this. And you can move in and continue to uh, work with dimensioning and so on to suit what are you wanting to show within your drawings? So very quickly, I've just taken uh, our physical model and I've automatically uh, worked at producing uh, various drawings from this model. So these, uh, in this case, I've produced engineering drawings. We can get into breaking all these components out and automating all the shop drawing production from uh, Protosteel. So that just gives you a bit of a, a snapshot. It gives you an idea of what we do with uh, Protosteel. I hope you found that interesting. Okay, it's a very powerful tool for being able to produce any type of steelwork detailing, uh, whether it's general engineering drawings or shop drawings. And all of this gets generated from the one central uh, product structure model.